guys, welcome back to Just Driven. Today's video is a really cool video. I think you guys are gonna love it. You know, this video was supposed to be about a very unique collaboration build uh, between Dennis McCarthy and Just Driven. And if you guys don't know who Dennis McCarthy is, then where have you been? What rock have you guys been hiding under? Dennis and those guys just kick ass. These are guys that actually live this stuff. Dennis McCarthy and his crew of fabricators are responsible for pretty much all the cars you've seen in the entire franchise, starting with three all the way to 10. We were supposed to be talking about a project that was really near and dear to our heart. We kind of got sidetracked when he opened up the doors to his shop. It just kind of got crazy from there. So check this out. We're at Dennis's shop right now and there's so much cool shit back here. I, I want to share it with you guys. It, do you mind if we just look no, around no. a little bit? Sure, sure. In there, I see a bunch of the later model chargers that you're using or that it was used in Fast 10, right? Yeah. So what in the heck, man? I see I see the, the later model Toretto charger. So are, what are these Yeah, cars? so this, this is basically kind of our overflow uh, storage garage at the moment. It, things change, you know, if we're on a show where we've got, yeah. you know, 50 guys here, this will become actually a work zone. But right now it's just parking. So uh, yeah, this is basically a Nova from Fast 9. This is... Uh, couple of chargers. Obviously, this one has the wrong wheels on it. Got I mean, it. when you say wrong wheels, I, I like the center line, so I kind of yeah. have played the card the last few films with center lines. And my theory on that was that uh, Toretto Sr. had his street tires, which were the ones you see in Fast 1. And then he had his race tires, which were center lines. Because back in that era, center lines were kind of the cool yeah, go-to for, for a sure. drag race wheel and tire combo. So this car here on top, this was basically just a uh, something we put together very quickly for a flashback scene in Fast 9. Uh, the car below is another one we built for Fast 10. If you've seen the trailer, there's a sequence where uh, Dom's actually teaching his son to drive. They're out there at Dodger Stadium just burning through tires. Oh, it was yeah. really a fun day. That. Yeah, yeah. And that was what this car was used that for? That was one of those cars. So what and motors are in these? Are these LS So the top or... car has basically what looks like a true 426 Hemi, but it's actually a 66 383. We bolted some Hemi heads on it. Got the BDS blower. Painted it up. It looks great because oh, wow. the car never had to run. So it was just lowering into Got the it. car. So okay. that was it. The lower car is our uh, typical, you know, 525 horse LS motor. So, uh, wow. So you know, cool. so like I said, it just uh, it's good for burnout after burnout after burnout. Yeah. You know? So uh, now these are what sixty uh, nines and seventies, or are they just a hot? Well, of I mean, they're both they're both seventy appearing. I'd have right. to actually do a little digging and tell you what they are, but it could be a sixty eight, sixty nine, could be a seventy. You know, I mean, we've some you're running years. out of cars. Isn't it getting hard to find cars now? Yeah. Well, my buddy, there's a good friend of mine, Dave Salvaggio, that's been making. Uh, carbon fiber bodies and I think he's oh, wow. really at 90% scratch built so there's just a few little areas that we need to work on to get created where That's we don't amazing. have to have a donor car which is really just like the uh, the ape or the door hinge areas you know some of the got it you know the rear trunk stuff inner stuff so but it's very very close I think okay I think hopefully next one next time around the car will be a completely scratch built car but we know no original charges. That's amazing. I mean, well, it's becoming a necessity because they're so hard to find. Yeah. And when you do find them, they're so expensive, it's getting fairly ridiculous, you know. So. I know, we're realizing that too. It's it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I see uh, I see Camaros. I see a bunch of 69 Camaros. Are, yeah, that's, that's another cool. film that we just finished. It's not quite uh, wrapped yet, so we're hanging on all the cars just in case they're needed again. You know, as usual in movie car fashion, you know, they're... Uh, there's one nice one, which I believe is the car on the rack. So this is a true... True big block, four speed, twelve bolt. This car is really wow. like a car that you could that you could drive every day if you wanted to. Right. And they kind of go downhill from there. Then there's like a semi hero car that right. you know still looks good. It doesn't right. have all the bars in it. And then from there we go to the full stunt car, which like you've seen across the street, yeah. the car will have all the bars and the tubes right. behind the quarter panels, behind the fenders, and everything else. Got it. Got and it. then we have like a specific crash car, you know, as well. So it's just kind of. There's kind of a chain. There was actually six of them total. Well, you did an amazing job. I, I mean, you could see where the it, the camera equipment bolts up to the bottom, or is that for pulling that the is, car behind the That's exactly for camera equipment. So that's, camera that's all equipment? camera mount stuff. Okay. There's you know two in the front, two in the sides, two in the rear. Kind of the nice. typical yeah. layout for uh, I've seen that on a few cars camper. we've yeah. done with you before. So and these cars in the film, there's a lot of action. There's a lot of people in the car crawling all over the car. There's all sorts of stuff going so on. So you needed so. six of these, and yeah. you bought all convertibles. You didn't buy any coupes until. Oh the no, we cheated that too. So yeah, factory. Convertible, factory convertible. There was one other one that was a factory convertible. The other ones were hard tops that were just cut the we, tops. We off. made our own convertibles. Yeah. yeah. So this looks like might be a fast car. 
this this looks like it's something you'd see in yeah this movies. is the brand new z uh we had these cars very early on for fast 10 i think we had first two that were in the country are these pre-production nissans or we don't mm. know i believe this is, this one i believe is a pre-production car and honestly we didn't do that much to it uh other than just change the wheels to some hres got it up the tire size we did actually lower the car slightly I think this is one that we lowered. I think it was just like a one inch drop, very, very minimal. But that was about it. You know, I mean, the cars were pretty, is this pretty in, awesome is this right in out of the 10? box. This one is 10. In oh, 10, nice. it's actually uh, wrapped green. So it wasn't oh, this wow. car, but this is the same car that was in 10. So. Okay, so it just had a wrap on it? Yep, that's that was cool. It. This this looks familiar. This thing is, this thing's badass. That falls in that one of my favorite, favorite ever builds right there from Hobbs and Shaw. So this was, uh, I don't know, it's really, uh, I, I refer to it as Shaw's rat rod because yeah. in the film, he's blasting this thing around the, uh, yeah, so cool. the Hobbs compound, you know. I remember, so, uh, is this, did you build multiple versions of this or is this We did the it. So we started, the initial plan was to build multiple vehicles and then we just, one, we ran out of time, two, the, yeah. the sequence lessened enough where we thought, hey, we'll just get get by with one, which we did. The car was pretty much unbreakable. You know, wow, that's they fantastic. Aired it out, jumped and everything else, and uh, that thing's sick. What I sense, motors in this uh, thing? It's LS LS3 Turbo 400, wow. uh, Curry 9 inch. Uh, so you started from scratch and just put the body on it. They, yeah, the chassis was built by a friend of mine named Johnny Kaiser back in North Carolina. Nice. And then it was Johnny Miller here at my shop that basically built from the chassis up. But like I said, it's I love race this. car quality. You this know is, what I mean? This is, you could just tell. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of work you put in your control arms. Go run well. this thing on a short yeah. course track. You could go run it, you know. That's pretty sick. Out in Barstow, you could pretty much, you know, put the thing through anything and it'll keep on going. Dude, I mean, this car, this is insane. I mean, is this a real thing? Is this yeah? Is this that really car is one hundred percent legit. Mid so, yep. Power? So that's a true, uh, true Mopar, you know, over the counter, eight hundred horse, you know. What transmission? What transaxle? You it's a this? Lamborghini six-speed manual transaxle with an adapter plate to made it up to the Mopar engine. So oh it's a God. pretty cool combination. And you built uh, all this here at your shop? Frame rails and the body came from Speedcore, and then my guys did it all from there. Obviously, got our you know our Brembo brakes that we use on every film. This thing is insane. Uh, it looks longer. It is longer. I mean, so I, I always, I've said this before, but I always gripe that the Charger had too much front overhang for it the did, tire yeah. forward. It did, yeah. So you. So I always cheated. Like even on Fast Ten, I cheated a couple inches. I want to keep those cars looking a little more OE. But this car, I think I cheated at like eight inches. You know, so I really pushed it out long. Stretched the wheel, wheel base base. out. And I always like, like things as low as they can be. The car came out too low. That's the only snag oh, really? with this car. Is it just I think the ride height is too low visually and practically but yeah, due, due to the yeah. way it all laid out and by the time we got the car on the ground it was too late to make a change but the cv axles were maxed out oh, so i it. couldn't really raise the right height anymore if you look at the stunt car versions which i think we built eight of them that actually had an ls and a fiberglass mopar engine in the back right those ones sit a little bit higher just because you know like, like usual yeah, right. fast and furious style man we're we're not always on smooth terrain so yeah, they absolutely. need to be able to take take a little abuse that's know, crazy so. Well, I, I, I love this car. This is so iconic. Is, is yeah. this something that you're just going to sit here? It's, it's really one of my favorites. Yeah, this you know, thing I is love insane. the knockoffs. I was kind of going for a, oh, like a 60s kind of Le Mans race car kind of a deal, you know, kind of yeah. like almost GT40 ish, which is kind of where you get the, the mid engine package from, right. you know? Yeah. And I love the knockoffs that, you know, HRE did for us. Cool. Yeah, no, it just turned out being a super cool car. And it was probably one of the fastest chargers we've ever built. Really? And, you know, unfortunately, you know, we always want to do like a track day like we did in the old days, but it yeah. seems like nowadays we're just your window of time. Yeah, it's yeah, just it's compressed so hard. Yeah. That, you know, and it's hard to get everything them. out there. We usually paint them and load them and they're on a plane going to the going to location. But just making a few passes on Clyborne, it's I'll say it's the fastest charger really? that we've ever created. That's yeah. Fantastic. Well, like I said, it's an eight hundred horsepower car with wow. you know the motor in the middle and it, it hooks up like you can't believe. Yeah, I, I would sick. assume on the racetrack it'd probably have a little bit of a push, you know, issue, but uh yeah. You know, maybe with some fine tuning, you could work that out. But. What size tires or what, what wheel size? What, how how wide are those? the wheels? Were 11s. I don't want 11, to say that yeah. tire is like a 345, that's 45, just, 18. I, I think is what it was. That's off, just off insane. Top of my head. It's one of my favorite cars. I I love what you did with it. Now, I know you're an Impala guy. You've got an absolutely beautiful 66 yourself, right? Yeah, well, thank and, you. thanks to you. I yeah, do, so yeah. I mean, that car is sweet. And so this thing, this is in 10, right? Is this one of the Correct, cars in yeah. 10? This okay. is the Jason Momoa car from 10. It's very cool cars. I mean, I love the lines of these. To me, they kind of look like a big 66 Chevelle, you know, so I just, I just dig them. This particular car was more considered our stunt car. Okay. In the movie, you see it, it has massive, like 14.5 wide rear tires. This is the only car that we didn't put a narrow rear end on it. Because going into that story, 
We didn't know if it was gonna be a straight line race or a windy road race. So we wanted to at least have one car that could actually make a right or a left-hand turn. So that was this car. Got it. How does that work, Dennis? When, when you get the script, right, you look at your script notes and you see right. exactly how it's gonna be used. How much time do you have to build the car to ensure that it's gonna be these cars, for these cars, script. I want to say we had less than a month to build five Impalas. That's crazy. And the, and the thing was, the car was really chosen before the location. So you're kind of building a car, not knowing exactly what we're going to do with the car. Okay. You know. So, uh, anyways, but like I said, that's, it all that's... it all worked out great. And I'm glad the race was a straight line race because, in my opinion, that's more fast right. and furious. You know, right. going back to the old school four right. car race. You know, which, like I said, you've seen it in the trailer. Yeah. It's a great scene. I mean, it really is. A, I mean, I think it's a far. I haven't, Far seen more the movie. Exciting. I haven't seen 10 yet. So you, you saw the premiere. I've seen I've seen you know? uh, I haven't seen the premiere just because that's coming out, but I've seen just some screenings of it. But it's it's okay. it's great. It came yeah. out amazing. And like I said, you can catch this race in the trailer and it's I saw or at least, I least saw a portion, that. but it's it's yeah. pretty cool. It's yeah. pretty cool. And that's yeah. the other car I think in there, right? Because there's another one in there that's got a fully built cage. And Correct. That Correct. car is yeah. pretty we sick. actually built a couple of, you know. Kind of existing race cars instead of building a car from scratch. So, oh, you did just because we had just because our time frame. I wanted yeah. to find cars that were already narrow. Then we had to do uh, one of them ourselves. We you know put a whole you know back half frame section of the thing and put the big tires on it. So, well, it's just amazing to me because I see all this stuff. I've been working with you for so many years now, and I every time I come in here, it's sensory overload. Yeah, I know. It's never, I mean, I'm never, sure never, you get never, that from uh, Never a dull moment here. around here. You know, that's it's, for sure. It's just so. it's just mind boggling to see what you guys pull out of here. So, you guys, you got a pretty huge staff. I mean, I. Every time I walk in here, and that's why I was a little worried. I'm like, God, I hope you could have the time. I don't want to be a thorn in your side. You no, know, I, mean, this, I mean, right now, as you know, summer. there's a strike going on, so the industry is, you know, overall slowed somewhat. So, and that's know. still happening right now. I, I have a feeling it's going to go for quite a while. Is, is my my guess. So, so we'll that slows you down. But you got you got a lot of facility here. And, well, we and do a lot of projects. other than just features. We do all sorts of other stuff. You know, we're doing commercials, TVs. We build cars that go to different countries for other purposes. So there's. So far, knock on wood, there's never a shortage of work. Okay, so now for the real reason why we ended up visiting with Dennis. We have this project that we've been working on. You've probably seen it in the background of other videos, that being the Hummer H2. We need a vehicle that we could promote dog adoptions through. We're building a pretty big name in the rescue world space. Uh, we started a charitable organization called the Underdogs of Love. We take dogs that are at high kill shelters that are gonna be euthanized. We bring them to a facility where they can be bedded and housed and put up for adoption, and we're funding the entire project. We have about 14 dogs currently in our possession that we're trying to find forever homes for. And what a better opportunity. You know, we've been to so many car shows, and you always see people bringing their pets. You always see dogs at car shows. It turns out a lot of people that attend car shows love dogs. And so what a better way to bring a really unique vehicle that transforms into a rescue mobile. And so we're calling it the rescue rig. And Dennis and I start talking about all the plans of having the side slide out, having the rear cap open up for easy entry, easy access into the vehicle for elderly dogs. And we're gonna start taking it and promoting adoption events out of it. We've got so many projects going on and you've seen them. You know all the fast cars that we built. If you look through our previous videos, you'll see all the builds. We've got our Roadrunner build. We've got a Ferrari 288 project going on, a Firebird Trans Am Resto Mod going on, Ken Mary, Hako, countless projects going on. And we realized we don't have time to finish it. So when I mentioned it briefly to Dennis in a previous conversation, he loves dogs as well. And he wanted to show his support. And he said, bring it down. Let me do the back half. This is the guy that's built transformer vehicles. This is the guy that's built all the cars for the Fast Series. What a better guy to take his group of talented fabricators and build the entire back half of this thing. So we shipped the Hummer to him about a week earlier. And he's been so busy, he hasn't even had a chance to really look at it yet. So what you're going to see next is... He and I going over the build for the first time, just a preliminary chat. We're gonna be doing this build over the period of weeks, planning and whatnot. But what happens next is he opens up more warehouse space to us. And what we saw first and originally was pretty cool. What we see next, unbelievable. Stay tuned, you're gonna like this. So let's talk about our Hummer real quick. I love the idea. I love the concept. So we lengthened it. I, I don't know if you could tell, but this is a 2500 frame assembly. And we, I noticed that. Yeah, we the, patched it in over here. Yeah, the leaf springs so, are a dead giveaway. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As opposed
opposed to the coils. Yep. So what do you think? I was thinking maybe going dual wheel setup because we want to provide a little more stability. For sure. So our original plan Plus was... Plus it looks cool. I know? think it would be different, right? Yeah, especially if you're doing a big body, it'll just make it more proportional and everything else. So. Yeah, and you know, our original plan was to turn this into an Overland vehicle. You know, it's yeah. got a Duramax, L, I think it's an LLY yeah. with an Allison tranny. Right now we just have the rear drive axle in it. We don't have the front, but it's a runner and driver. We finished the bulkhead back here. The idea of using an SUT is because it's got this really cool mid gate. Yeah, and the mid gate great. folds forward so that way it'll give access to, to come all the way around. What I was thinking was coming off and going wide, kind of like an RV. So it comes yep. out, squared out here and comes in this way. And then the idea was, was to have two large kennels for right. larger dogs that slide out. So you know like right. a catering truck yeah, has yeah, those yeah, doors yeah, yeah. that open up like this? Yeah. The idea was was to have those doors that have windows in them. Right. The dogs can actually see through the kennels and see dogs through the windows. Dogs love windows, so yeah. Yeah, you know, you know that's exactly. what I was thinking. And then have a slide out that yeah. comes out about this far, and as the door opens, this slides out to here. And then kind of do an arched back, you know, so it, yep. it, it kind of shows the overland theme. Now the big question Kind of like is, that earth roamer look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the idea is to have the box go all the way over, have the box come in and then have yep. it come over and extend over this. I pulled the headliner out because yeah. I figured we could mount it to the roof somehow and we could, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to pull the sunroof or leave the sunroof in. It doesn't matter, you know, just okay. have to do, uh, you know, some kind of a big, you know, rubber mount because nothing's going to move. Exactly. That's the together, thing I'm worried about. So that's, that's the tricky part there because typically the bed's mounted solid and the bodies mounted on rubber, but we can figure something out there. So I've got all this plastic, right? And I'm going to have yep. this remade to, to match this kind of bulkhead. I already had these done in fiberglass and had a mold made for these. Looks great. So, yeah. so these kind of finish that off. The window still works. We're going to clean all this stuff up, you know, um, yeah, yeah. once we get it back. And then, you know, we'll do the paint work and the finish work and all that stuff. I just Perfect. need someone to, we don't need water. We don't need electricity. Well, we might want some wires run back here to yeah. put some lights in the inside. But the idea is, is when this folds forward, you know, we could walk through here and then I could have volunteers staged standing in here, have kennels on each side that pop That's out. Great. And then the big question is, is can we pull off kind of like what an RV has on the back where the whole back pops up and yeah, then has a absolutely, ramp absolutely. so some of the older senior dogs can gain Abs access Absolutely, yep. Is that something you could do? Yep. Awesome. And then what do you think about maybe boxing the frame in, kind of providing a little bit more stability? What do you think yeah, about Yeah, we that? could. I don't think it's... I don't know if it's 100% necessary, unless you're going out and really hammering. No, we're thing, not. But I, I was just mostly concerned about this area not where, being boxed Where you in. graft it in. Yeah. yeah, we can easily, you know, water jet out some plates and lay okay. them in there. It's and funny, then, I, I did a video years ago for Nissan where we built a dog. It was a, what was it? It was a, was it a Rogue, I want to say. Well, we did that. We had a dog yeah, ramp. Yeah, they had, that. Yeah, the dog. Yeah, they were really big the on bathing thing. Yeah, dogs we had a whole, love trucks. Mm, that was their it motto. It was cool. <laughs> yep. It was a much yeah. smaller scale than this, but, you know. Same that would idea, be same idea. That would be so cool. So yeah, we're like I said, our our goal is is just to really go out there and try to promote, you know, hoping and and finding yeah. people that want these dogs. And we know that you know always, car shows. Always necessary. There's you know, always just, people yeah. at car shows that have dogs, and so th sure. there's definitely a connection there. Yep. And if this is a, a worthy vehicle of being shown off at a car show, we feel like it'll be an opportunity yeah. for us to draw some attention, yeah. bring people in. You know. Yeah, and you don't it see too many. Focus for sure. You don't see so. Duramax diesels in too many Hummers. No, these days, that's for know? sure. We have another one being built at the shop right now. That's just an SUV Hummer. That'll be my truck, and that I, I put a later model Duramax drivetrain in that with a six-speed auto. This is a five-speed auto, Allison, in this one. And that cleared the floor pan and all that stuff. Everything, okay, everything yeah, fits. Huh? Yeah, yeah. The body came off the frame when yeah. we did it. And are these wheels okay on it for now? I mean, they're too big. We're not going to put these on it. I yeah, kind of want to go with the going, stock size. Yeah, if you're going to go with a dually, we'll obviously have to do some, something different, but you know. Yeah, I'm hoping to find a wheel because I don't want to do a dually front hub. Right. Uh, it, it'll just look weird on a Hummer. And, yeah, and the yeah. idea is, is to find a matching wheel that'll match the dual rear wheels, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've even seen it where you can run like a normal wheel with a, you know, the right steel and that would know, be cool spacer too. that you can just. Yeah. I Make just figured work. since we're going so high, I didn't. I just figured the dual wheels will provide a totally. little more stability. Totally, and I think I think it's going to make it look right too, especially because if you're bringing the body out, we can't have the tires sucked under. So, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. So yeah, that's that'll my be, concern. Uh, Is this something that you guys? I think can... it's going to work. All right, absolutely. And then just do you know, we'll talk about budget and let me know what you need from me and steel it, and man. all that crap and yeah. No worries. I freaking really enjoyed working with you, man, and I just can't tell you yeah, how much likewise, I appreciate likewise. you no, giving you us this opportunity. No, you know, appreciate all the help. You guys are always a great resource for cars and parts and everything else in between. So I can't believe all the new Mopar stuff on this side. I mean, 
you've got to have a really wonderful relationship with the guys over at Dodge. You have to. For sure. No, they're great. We've been working together for, well, really since Fast Five, so it goes back quite a ways. It's absolutely mind-boggling to see all these cars in here. These look these look brand new. I mean, are these? They are. These are. Yeah, these are all, you know, cars that have probably 500 miles on them, so. Damn. This is a true Hellcat six-speed car. So nice. this car was slated for 10. Uh, Letty went from a car to a bike. Well, we're, we're gonna find a great spot for these in the next one. So that's, that's why we're basically just kind of starting to go through all these now just to get them ready for. Get them ready, yeah. Yep. I see the gray ones too, and I and I see this one. This looks actually more like a hero style car. Is this is this Charger right here, one of the cars? Yeah. It was more. Yeah, this was another one of the, the this another one of the cars that we built for Dodger Stadium. Oh, wow, okay. So this was another one of the Dodger Stadium, you know, I'll call it Dodger Stadium Burnout and Donut Car because that's it's fascinating. Yeah, I'm just blown away. Every time I come here, there's so much cool stuff. Is that the, is that a jump car? Is that what the, is that what I'm seeing? It was right like there? the uh, that was the car from the revised ramp car we called it. Okay, yeah. I mean that's just insane. I don't know the car had a couple of different. You know, it depends. You know, some some people refer to it as a ramp car. Some people refer to it as a flip car because it would the flip, flip other car. cars. Right. Okay. Um, ramp car came because it basically looks like a big ramp. Fascinating. Um, so this is kind of, I kind of modeled this off the uh, Terrell F1 car from the, you know, back from the day when it had the dual front, dual front axles, or I won't say front axles, but dual front that's, suspension, that's basically, sick. so six wheels. So that's kind of where the concept came from. I mean, these are your ideas that you put on paper and then you have engineers come in and kind of make it work, or you do just, no, we're, just we're, kind of do it as you go? No, we're all, all in-house, so this was so basically... So you go uh, way back. Weren't you a high school? I read somewhere you were a high school uh, shop I, I was. Not not really. Uh, that was one of those unplanned uh, little uh, side gigs I had there briefly, but just, yeah. It's a long story, but I did do that for about three years, and a lot of those kids that were in my class or, you know, here in this shop today. Like, I was going to uh, ask you that. That's like that kid, cool. Brian Grody over there, like he was one of my students back in 98, you know, when I taught out auto shop. That's awesome. A couple other kids, Logan Sixon, another kid. I mean, there's been a handful of them that have, you know, run through here. That's Coincidentally, we're doing construction and the AC guy comes in to do my air conditioning and he goes, you don't remember me, do you? And I go, eh. no, he goes, dude, I was in your auto shop, man. I'm like, it's awesome. So anyway, that's, that's so cool. It's always, How many years did you do that? Three. That's fancy. That's I did fantastic. that. Uh, I had a business in Burbank, which I had sold, and at the time I thought, I'm going to take a little vacation, and then, you know, at a party, talking to a buddy of mine, and he said he was a previous auto shop teacher at Burbank yeah. High, which is where I went, yeah. coincidentally, and he said, man, they're really desperate, and I went down, well, I got a call Monday morning that, hey, we hear you're interested in a job, and it took me a minute to think, job, what job? But anyways, I said, can you come down and talk to us? I went down, and I walked down there, and it's just a full-blown interview and I'm like wearing my shorts and my flip-flops. Oh, no way. And uh, they said, well, thank you for coming down. Thank you for coming. I said, okay, great. You know, and I went home, I go home, my phone's ringing and it's like, yeah, we want you to come back, do paperwork. You're hired. I'm like, all right. So I basically, uh, Was became, I basically became it? a school teacher before my wife got out of bed that morning. So, um, <laughs> It was great. I loved it. It was yeah. it was absolute blast. It's a shame. It's a shame now that that program has been shut down. Oh, is that right? Because it was such a valuable program. I think it yeah. was, you know. I think it's something that all schools should have. That schools well, should have welding. They should have auto shop. They should have machine shop. All the yeah. stuff they had when you know when you and I were kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is all you know pretty much. A, and it's and it's hard getting. At least, at least in people. California, it's yeah. a you know dying art. It seems like, but yeah, well, it's it's just a, it's a great story, and I I don't, I don't think many people know that. And I, yeah, and I no, love that fun. about you because yeah, it was a good time. It, it really it talks a lot about your character, you know. So, because yeah. um, it's more than just the car stuff. It's passing this passing the torch on to. The next generation is the way I look at it. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, I got my two kids building a Chevelle right there in the background. So there's always. I know your boys yeah. have been really involved in this business with you too, which is I, yeah. I find just fascinating, and I love the fact that they're part of it. You know, they get to share all this stuff with you, which is amazing. I just love what you do here, and I just can't tell you, like I said, how much I appreciate you taking the time and doing hey. this. Thank you. I don't. I know Any you're time, busy. Bro. You got a lot no of worries, stuff to do. Man. So no worries. yeah, let's. Uh, We'll, we'll stay in touch and let me know if you need anything from me. We'll, we'll bring get, it down. We'll get going on that uh, H2 project. For okay. You. Awesome. I love the idea. Thank you. All right, man. I Thank you. It. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was so cool to be able to share this information with you guys. Dennis has been a really important part of our business because we share cars with each other all the time. And a lot of cars that we've rented to the studios over the years, we've been working with the franchise for many years, and he's been a big part of this franchise. And to share all this behind the scenes stuff with you guys is 
really exciting for me. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. We read all the comments. Tell me what you think of this place. There's a lot more to see. Hopefully I'll be able to share more stuff with you guys in the future. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.